Thank you, Tony, for uh, having us over. You're welcome. Uh, I didn't actually know there's this kind of studio in the heart of Bucharest. Uh, what actually do you do here? Because it looks like a, a, a very old child's playground. <laughs> uh, basically, it's uh, predominantly a pack shot studio where we do with tabletop to, to, to film beauty shots for TV commercials. Uh, we've done short elements for films, music videos, whatever we can fit in the space. Really. You, you can fit a lot, actually mostly beer from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you have now one of the very few experts in fluids uh, and slow motion. I'm one of the few, yes, but the, there are more each year. Everybody seems to be... Uh, but people tend to say you're the best. Yeah, well, I've been in the industry for like over 30 years working my way through the art department. So, so I sort of, the, my experience that I bring to the table is more than just the practical what I do. It's also from the years of experience. But you're, are you actually so much into beer? No, not really. It's, well, it's beer is beer. It's, it's good, you know. I like wine. I prefer wine, red wine to beer. <laughs> That's funny because yeah. uh, when you're creating that, uh, those beautiful uh, beauty shots of uh, the slow-mo with, uh, with beer and everything, you actually make people get off the couch and run to the fridge or to the supermarket and get some more. You have to think about the new release say of a chocolate bar and you're the stylist with the chocolate bar and there are so many of these new chocolate bars on your table and after one or two days of filming and you taking little bites of the chocolate bar you don't really want to pick it up in the shop okay. <laughs> because it's uh, the experience of it. No actually it's um, I just prefer drinking wine. I mean some <laughs> beers are some beers are very nice you know some are a bit too bitter for me I prefer the sort of sweeter taste uh, in the beer. I, are you afraid of doing uh, that kind of slow-mo for a wine company? Because no. it, it might ruin it for you? No, 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 no. <laughs> I deal with vodka and spirits and yogurts and all types of uh, things with the fluid, fluid motions involved. Um, and I think that after the amount of years that I've been, been working in the industry, you sort of, you can see how things should work, it's even down to the lighting. Are you a director or are you just a fluids expert? Well, a, a lot of companies now will prefer me to direct because I'm actually the one doing the work. Uh, whereas uh, a, a, a director, let's say in a, a standard commercial, will have a story that he's telling with some beauty shots that are inserted that the client needs to, to emphasize the quality. Um, and so they'll give that to me because I know what how to resolve it, the technical side and the artistic side and the creative side. So what's side. the craziest things you hear from them? What, what they are trying to achieve when they come uh, to you? So they say, the I want to make yeah, this yeah, yeah. look like... That's very simple to answer. Uh, trying to um, combat physics. Combat physics? Yeah, trying to cheat physics. I mean, I have been asked many times to do things that my comment, my reply has been, I can cheat many things like a copy, but physics, uh, gravity. Gravity overtakes everything. This is physics. So they so want to see like beer. Do they want to see, say, uh, one of the occasions. Uh, can you pour the beer and swirl it around so that it creates a spiral as it pours out of the bottle? And it's like sort of well, it's, it's a liquid. It's not. A, it's not like a solid. It won't form a shape with a memory. It's. Um, you know, so, you know, asking something to pour upwards and say, okay, we can cheat this, we can flip the camera over to make it look as if la la la, but, but it's physics, it's, the, it's, uh, it's, it's physics and art, basically, which... Uh, physics and art? Yes, I would say and so. And then some mechanics? Uh, but that's the technical side of things, it's not so much the mechanics, mechanics... But you more. got involved pretty closely into that, and you're using uh, some state-of-the-art equipment, from what I know, because this is what uh, the best in the industry use now. Cranes, uh, high-speed cameras. Um, the the brother from this uh, brother or sister from this camera has been uh, awarded by the uh, Academy. In, uh, yeah, we use uh, try to use the best in technology to to achieve the thing. I mean, the thing with the the robot, for instance, the robotic arm is no more static beauty shots. Uh, in the past, elements would happen so quickly that to try to follow them with a focus or with any sort of move would be impractical. Uh, it could be done, but it would just take a lot of trial and error. And, and, uh, but nowadays I can program when it's going to release, I can program when, it's, when the focus should be, I can program the follow. I have uh, servos with magnets and 
hydraulics and the whole the whole thing to and control And you understand the everything. I, I've seen you controlling yes, the joystick. Yes. How do you call that? Uh, the joystick. It's a controller. So we have a That's PlayStation. We have a. This is run with a Xbox controller. We can program the the robot. Um, the basic system runs on Blender, which is open source 3D, like a Maya or something. And then we had an application written so that we can control the robot and program and trigger other events that. Uh, um, that will make everything more predictable. But you're not only a an user, you're getting involved in developing th these things. Uh, no, only for ourselves, really. I mean, this is, it's still, as I would say, beta, because we're always adjusting things, uh, finding another piece of code to make something but a bit smoother. Let know. me understand better. Where do the pieces come from? How did you end up with uh, this one-handed one, uh, robot? in your garage? I w well, was influenced by the spike from Marmalade um, from Germany. Uh, Thomas Degner explained what they'd done and I just thought, well, it's genius, you know. Then after the first uh, time uh, in IBC, I saw on pretty much so many monitors their showreel and how beautiful it was. I thought, well, this is the way forward, really, you know. And uh, then we started to investigate into developing it ourselves. Right, um, Why? Why did you need another one? And no, only to, to be able to have offer the facility to, to be able to move. The spike was the, the German uh, uh, thing, and uh, then uh, Mark Roberts pretty much used that idea to create the bolt. And we decided to make our own version of it just because of cost efficiency, okay. I think more than, more than anything. Cost efficiency. Let me yeah. uh, uh, let me know where did uh, the arm cap, uh, came from. The arm came from a, a second-hand robotics company in France. Okay, uh, we bought it off of the internet, and um, it's the same brand as the Bob or the, the sorry the Bolt or the uh, or the uh, um, or Spike, which is a Stabli. Uh, this one's a bit shorter. This is an RS. Uh, uh, this is a, a 130B. This is where the name Bob comes from. What about the camera? Uh, not even the camera is a, it's a regular piece of equipment. Well, this is the original Phantom Gold. It was from back in, we bought it in 2008. It's still got a beautiful image. It does exactly what it says on the box. And um, it's a little bit less sensitive than the high-speed cameras they have today. But it's beautiful and, and fills a gap in the market here. So Fills the gap in the market. What's that gap? The gap in the market is the fact that there are quite a few 4Ks have been invested in the country um, and they can be a little bit overpriced for certain elements. So, I mean, I can access any of the 4Ks I want in the country or just use my camera to do production or tests or whatever I want to. I mean, I've even used it uh, on shooting as a reference camera to see what is actually happening in the effects. So we had the 4K on the robot. And then I was filming on the side with the gold so that I can see what is actually happening in that, in that moment. Uh, and then you can know what to adjust to tune items and so it's quite useful. Many of the things I've seen are in uh, commercials, in mm -hmm. beer commercials, and we all have seen the slow-mo and everything. But uh, from what I know, you're pretty fond of working for the movie industry. So what are, what are you doing in that area? Well, I actually, I, I, I've only done a few films in my life, actually proper films when I was in the props in the, in the art department. And after about the fourth one, I just thought, no, I'll get back into commercials. This is what I started in and this okay. is what I prefer. Uh, the films I've worked in recently have mainly been for camera, you know, just for high-speed camera. There's a room for a high-speed camera in a movie. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. what are you doing with it uh, in the movies? Uh, it's generally to, to animate a, uh, a motion or a, 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 a moment, make it look more spectacular, or um, pretty much to, to bring a shot out to make it last longer and uh, you get more, more feeling from it. Why are people so into seeing the slow-mo of, let's say, an explosion, car accident, a bullet hitting a target? Well, it's not just the science, I suppose. It's also, I think, the, I can't remember one of the first, uh, um, what, what do they call it, logos of vision researchers, when it's, when it's too fast to see and too important not to. I think this is, I think if the, this is correct, I think this was on the website, when it's too fast to see and too important not to. So it can be anything from, uh, um, uh, 
what happens when a bullet hits a protective jacket, or what happens when, you know, I, even the telephone manufacturers, when you drop the telephone, actually, what stresses does it go through when it lands, car crashes, safety. Okay. And there's a whole, uh, the industry was actually the, the, the industry as in uh, all of this is, was actually the big, uh, most important part of the slow motion. I, I think it, spoke, it still is these days. The, the film side of it was just a, a, an add-on. I think from, it sort of started around the crisis in 2008, I think, because the photosonic is very expensive. Every time you turn it on, it's another 300 bucks with a film spinning around, you know. So, um, whereas the, the digital, you can see exactly what you've got. You can say, okay, this one, this one, this one, move on, we've got it. Uh, it's exactly what you've got straight as soon as you filmed it, and uh, it, it, it sort of took over from the, uh, the high speed. So you like it here, yeah? and you work whenever you're needed, or yes. whenever you like it? No, whenever I'm needed. So I can choose the scripts. I do actually choose scripts. So if it's something that I don't feel that I will excel at, I will just say, no, I'll, I'll put you in touch with you know, blah, 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 because, I mean, you always, you know, I, I enjoy a challenge, but then sometimes things are just outside of my... my uh, what do you like shooting most? Uh, what do I like shooting most? Oh, that's, Ducks. No, no that's, um, <laughs> that's uh, a question I couldn't answer. It's like asking me what my favourite music would be like, or... Uh, <laughs> that, that's know, too hard. Yeah, that's too, it's too... I just enjoy the whole... When did you last enjoy it? When did I last enjoy him? Yesterday, when everyone, yeah, hey, this is fantastic. <laughs> so so uh, you get a, a kick from their oh, excitement. Absolutely, everybody, everybody gets a, a, a kick from being appreciated. It's, um, so when you have a talent that can, I, I would call it a talent, it's more experience. When you have a talent that can save time in the production because you know how to get the effects. Uh, um, it's only, as I say, if you're being, get requests for work outside of the physical, so you just say, well, that's computer graphics. So if you wanted to do this, it's computer graphics. I can't, I can't make the splash turn into a bear. It is, <laughs> if it looks like a bear in one shot, is one thing, but I can't do that. You know, it's, uh, yeah. What was your most, uh, I don't know, your most successful project in the last year or so? Mm, in the last, I I've had, Rooms of people clapping when I do something, so you get like a, like as a you get that thing. I'm like a magician or something, and it's just controlling the elements. It's just controlling the elements. I suppose that my, with my experience and my age and the fact that I'm foreign in uh, in you know I, I get a bit more respect and people will listen to me and then I do things my way and you know I know how I can control that that. Uh, that environment, but they'll show me a picture and say, okay, this is what we want, and it's like, okay, la la la, I have to build this, I have to make a rig, I have to make some device that I can control this, uh, this uh, you know, what they want to see. It, the, uh, is this it, one right? of the reasons you like uh, being here, being the foreign guy? No, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, well, I've been here almost 18 years now, you know, it's, uh, in Romania, but it's, it's a second home for me now, definitely a home. I'm, I mean, I, I've got friends here that I would trust on the end of a rope, like holding me the... It's that social environment, I think, is the thing, is that in, uh, in the West, we, we've lost that sort of, that real social thing, whereas the, the, the Romanians, the mama's always on the phone, what have you eaten? Uh, they, it, it, and that is really, really nice. I mean, when Diana passed, when I lost my wife, I, Franza slept on my sofa for two weeks upstairs, okay? He looked after me for two weeks, make sure I, I was okay. And I thought, would that happen in England? I don't know. Would the English, would I have a friend sleep to make sure I'm okay? And, you know? And so when he called me just before his birthday, he said, Tony, I want to jump out of an aeroplane. You know, will you do it with me? I just said, yes. I'm not even, don't even think about it. You know, okay. I just said, yes. So um, you would fly from a, an airplane with a Romanian friend? No, I did. <laughs> ah, you, you already <laughs> I did. did. I did. I just did it. I sat on the edge, go, boom, and I'm out. And the guy behind me, he said it was like textbook. I said, no, I just listened to everything you said. <laughs> Make okay. sure I, uh, I do it right, you know, so... But then when Francis said, let's do it again, I said, no, 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 no. that's <laughs> off the list, mate, no, thanks, thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> so what else is on, on your bucket list then, oh besides my, jumping uh, from an airplane? On my bucket list, I don't know, I mean, I'd like to go to the east quite a bit, because I haven't been to, I haven't visited some, I think travelling is a really important part of, um, of, of uh, growing. 
And I think the more that you're you travel, growing now. Yeah, you're, well, everybody grow. You can't stop, can you? Otherwise, you know. Uh, but I think the traveling is the main thing. And although my work brought me here, you know, and it's taken me to many places in the world, there's still areas that I haven't been to. I haven't been to Asia or uh, India or any of that sort of area, Australia, this sort of side, you know. Um, and that's what I'd really miss to do. I'd, I'd really like to do to say... Like, Get a sabbatical. Uh, no, it's just the experience of people, you know. I mean, once you, once you do start to travel, you just see we're just all human beings. At the of end course. of the day, we just, we just forget about racial color and sexual and blah, blah, blah. We're just human beings, okay? So once you travel more, you get to see this. It soaks in a lot more if, if you're yeah. open enough, that is, you know. What do you feel about uh, the industry when it pushes the limits? Because uh, there's a lot of Romanian mythology concerning a, a beer that's not that great. And be, be, uh, in the time of Ceausescu, Mm. Ceausescu. We had this uh, myth about uh, the beer companies putting detergent in the beer for more foam. foam. <laughs> no, I think I think there's some sort of seaweed mix they put in it. That does seaweed. It. Yeah, I think there is a sort of seaweedy mix or something. I don't quite know the uh, the whole the way it all is broken down. It's not my. Uh, Thing. I just know how to make it last a bit longer <laughs> so that we can get the right moment. But when you do that, is that real <coughs> beer foam? Sometimes, sometimes. And uh, if we're very close to the camera, definitely. I mean, I have a, a mix that I make that creates a fake foam, but this is good when you've got 50 people in a bar and they all need a bit of foam on the beer. You know, it's, uh, if you move it in the glass, you can see it's just solid. You know, but uh, I have a method that I use. I use real foam in the top, and it really cheers, it all splashes, and, da, 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 and as you drink, it just moves like it's, a, it's just been poured, you know, because it has just been poured. So. You need to help the beer be at its best when you shoot it. When you shoot yeah, it well, I, I think this is also one of the reasons that I, I can do so well, as I say, because I'm foreign, because I'm a little bit older, and, and I know how to control the situation. You know, I mean, in the early days when I was I was working with beer, especially, is I'd make the perfect beer and put, and then suddenly I can't tell the camera to turn over. I'm just doing my part, and then the focus puller comes in and the lighting, la 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 la, and by that time the beer's gone. You know, so so as I started to get a bit more respect in what I do, I could say, roll camera, okay, this is get ready, guys, la la, and now, and and, uh, and we get the premium moment, you know. And, uh, what kind of advice, uh, career advice would you give to a Romanian trying to rise as a professional and then leveraging that? Because when, when you grow, um, let's say, strong enough, mm -hmm. opportunities come your way all the time. So how do you decide when to say no or stop? Uh, I think you just have to have confidence in yourself that what you're doing is the right thing. I mean, let's face it, everybody here, you guys here, all of everybody I know, have all come from completely different backgrounds and have a completely different upbringing, upbringing. also a completely different perspective as to what is right and wrong in, uh, in even your wife or your partner, or whether you're still different people, you know. So, but you have to believe in yourself that what you're doing is right. Okay, if some people can straighten you out and just say, look, mate, you're going too far now, you should calm down a bit. But, and if you hear that, then you should think about what they're saying. But at the end of the day, if I want to draw doodles on a thing and do my best, why aren't I going to be the next Picasso? Who knows? It's, uh... Or there's a Mr. Doodle on Instagram and mm -hmm. YouTube doing that. You know, you know the guy? No, I don't. He's, think he's so. great. You, yeah. you need to check him out. So it's inner, it's inner confidence in yourself. You know, I see people, uh, they, they all just want to buy new shoes. Or the, my secretary used to want bags. She wanted to buy a new bag. And, and I'll explain, this will only keep you happy for like 10 minutes or an hour, maybe a day, you know, but after that you'll want another bag. So the, the happiness should come from in here and you should be more confident in yourself and accept who you are. How do you get that? How do you find that uh, confidence? I don't know, I don't know, but I, see, I, I just you, feel you look, I you accept look satisfied. You uh, I, I know my weaknesses, I know my, where I'm, I'm this is going off completely off. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I know who I am, <coughs> you know, I know my weaknesses, and I know my, my bonuses, you know, I know where I think I, I do, and, and I know uh, I am too nice to people, I'm, you know, I could be a lot more stiffer and think a lot more about me, you know, but I don't, and 
But then, as I say, I've met a group of people here that are exactly the same. Or in that same mind of thought, the same as I do in Russia, in Ukraine, or in you meet the people that are in the same sort of same psyche, the same zone. You know, and okay. that's what makes I say we're just people, we're just human beings. I want to thank you for your time yeah, no and uh, for receiving us here in your secret uh, dungeon <laughs> <laughs> with the, your uh, Bob friend here. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'd be happy to see more of your work, and I would be most happy if we could do. Uh, a few smaller project with, uh, I don't know, doing something in slow-mo. Yeah, sure. Whenever you feel okay. like it, whenever you want to get promoted, we're yeah. big on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that, you don't really want no, it. Well, if you type beer stylist into Google, and you, I'm in the group at the top there, normally. So, so that's good enough yeah, for you? Yeah. Uh, okay. Beer stylist. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Thank you, Tony. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Dacă v-a plăcut ce a povestit cu Tony, puteți afla mai multe despre el în articolul de pe site. Nu uitați să ne dai un like, un share și un subscribe dacă vrei să mai vezi astfel de interviuri, astfel de oameni și astfel de scule la care chiar nu te aștepți că pot fi găsite în țara noastră. Până data viitoare, numai bine!